Hello, women of the future. This is the unspoken language of authenticity. The subject is of deep interest to us and me in particular because honesty, integrity, authenticity has always been one of my favorite topics and something that I myself had chosen to explore. Sister Denise, as you may already know, has been in the studio with us for this entire series and she is sharing her take on this topic as well as others. And uh, today I would invite you to join us to hear what she has to say on this fascinating topic. Sister Denise, it's always wonderful to have you here. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Uh, tell me, um, authenticity itself is um, a beautiful subject, uh, but the unspoken language of authenticity, that uh, piques uh, my attention. Uh, what is your take on it? To me, it reminds me of, you know, real, a real diamond, real gold, um, real perfume, not chemical. Something about the real um, makes a person trust and that, that's really what you want. And there are many people who say that all I want is to be real. That's beautiful. Mm. Yeah, okay. So Sister Denise, uh, this being a spiritual journey, uh, how does one embark on on this do you um you know wait for lightning to strike or do you sit um like you shared in a previous episode of reflective study and ask yourself what is important to you and take it from there well in our series we're looking at women of the future and obviously there's a comparison with women of the past and I think that in the past, we've had to adopt ways that now we see it's, it's not real. And being real, being natural, uh, I don't know, it just seems to be something that, that draws the person and that is drawing the age that we're in. Um, artificial is not uh, attractive, it's gaudy, um, and, and so people are yearning for real, not only real but true, and so the authentic, you know, the real me, who is the real me? Because there are so many selves inside, you know, and which is the real me? Which is the authentic me? Uh, what is there about myself that is put on artificial, um, I, I behave in a certain way, why, in order to please, in order to get promotion. You know, it's as if the, the artificial has a, an agenda with it, whereas the authentic is just, this is me, this is what I am, this is who I am, take it or leave it. Um, the fact that one is attracted to this quality, that itself says a lot about the person, doesn't it? Yeah. It does, it yeah, does. Yeah. Because I think the real also says that you are yourself true. You're true, you want the truth, you want to be true to yourself, you want to be true to other people, you want to be true to your destiny also. What so, does that mean? I'm sorry to interrupt you, but what does that mean to be true to your destiny? That's <laughs> quite um, deep. Well, uh, I've uh, fastened my seatbelts and I've invited everyone at home to do the same. Tell us about that. I've never heard that expression before. Well, I do think that we do have a, a destiny. And if you survey people, you'll find there's a huge number of people who do believe that they have a destiny. There's some sort of story written out for them. And I think that your destiny and your real self, these, these are um, very connected. So that if you're living in a way that is not true to yourself, and of course we have that very famous Shakespearean quote, to thine own self be true, as being the um, message of the father to his son, you know, just before his son embarks into the unknown. So uh, this is really a legacy and of course there's an attraction to the fake because the artificial um, 
somehow draws people's attention and so if you're an attention getter or whatever maybe you will be false or maybe the real you isn't dramatic enough and so you adopt some false way but in the end um, you're with yourself and if you want to have a lasting meaningful relationship with anybody uh, being true is key and your destiny is in a way I mean you don't know what it is but it's something that corresponds to the real you and I think if you're really being true to yourself you you'll see your destiny opening up and maybe you have a very powerful destiny you won't be afraid of it uh, maybe you have a very simple destiny it won't worry you because you're not concerned about being something special or whatever but you're concerned to be to be real hmm. uh, so Denise this may be far too wide a question but I'm gonna ask it anyway uh, the world that we're living in, um, one doesn't find a myriad of authentic people walking around now, do we? Um, because, like you rightly put it, um, that which has become superficial and artificial has become so attractive. And the word that comes to mind is um, meretricious. A lot of emphasis is placed on the external and uh, you know that which is beautiful and attractive on the outside uh, is being promoted has been promoted and is being promoted and yet there is very little emphasis placed on substance so why has the world become like that what has brought humanity to this point where uh, that which is real is become as rare as a diamond let's look at people's interest in organic food Organic food does not look as nice as nice, beautiful, rosy apples which are like styrofoam on the inside. People want the substance. People want the inner qualities. And I think people are beginning to realize that looks are deceptive, you know. Still, I think it's still a minority of people who will choose that. But um, it's mostly, I think, because people are absolutely under the influence of what it looks like, what it seems to be, the material, the superficial, the glamour, the glitter, the glitz, you know. And um, people think that if something is all gilded, it is gold. But we know that um, the gilded isn't mm. the gold. And maybe the real is not so shiny and sparkly as the artificial, but uh, I think that when we pursue spirituality, we also um, tune into the real, which is much more subtle, much more delicate, much less showy. Mm. What does it mean uh, to thine own self be true? It's an age old expression, but uh, how do I? an informed and uh, willing spiritual uh, practitioner, somebody on a spiritual journey, how do I put this into practice? I think that in any gathering, group, organization, some sort of ideal look is held up in front of you that if you want to be successful, if you want to be one of these, you have to look like this. And if you desire that, you'll make yourself look like that, but it won't be real. If you prefer to be real, then that will not draw your attention. You will say, well, that's very nice, but this is me, you know. And um, I think that a person who is really true to themselves, that person realizes that I... Um, I have to live with myself forever. But these people, these positions, these circumstances, they come and go, you know. Uh, so to be very concerned about what is permanent, that pulls us into what's real. And even, you know, in, um, in Indian philosophy, the, the description of something real 
is connected with how permanent it is. Okay, so which begs the question, what is permanent? Well, of course, this, it's your this soul. Isn't your body is very impermanent. Your circumstances are impermanent. Your relatives are impermanent. Everything is impermanent except your soul. So I think being true to yourself means really being true to your own soul and knowing, for example, with the idea of reincarnation, it means I will really be with myself forever and ever, a birth after birth after birth. And the only being that you will also be with forever is the being of the divine of God, you see. Everybody else is coming and going. Mm. So that um, truthfulness to yourself, truthfulness to God is so empowering when you make that the focus of your life. Mm. And even if other people will say, well, if you don't want to look like this, then we're not interested in you. Say, fine, I'm not interested in that. So if you don't want me, that's your problem, okay. not my problem. A, an individual who's on the journey to become authentic focuses on that which is permanent. Yes. Okay, that's very powerful. So, Sister Denise, um, as with all spiritual endeavors, one has to face the inside. And on the inside, there's a myriad of feelings, of desires, of um, I want this, I don't want this. There's trauma, there's pain, there's a history. And at the same time, you're uh, heading towards your authentic self. What do you do with your own baggage? Well, I think that part of spirituality makes you realize that even that is a superficial layer. And so you just keep going deeper until you touch the essential self, because that is also temporary. I'd like to stop you there. For many individuals, their pain is so um, all-consuming uh, that it becomes part of the identity. We've discussed this before in other episodes, okay? So that being the case, um, how do you get past that? I understand what you're saying theoretically, but my next question is how do you go beyond and underneath your own pain? How do you do that? See, the identity of a soul is you are constructed from purity, peace, power, love, bliss and you have the capacity to experience, to think, to evaluate, etc. So your experience of pain is recent and transitory. And even if it has become part of your identity, it is not your identity. So, you know, we were talking at one point about reflective studies. A reflective study means to reflect upon the fact that your pain arose at a certain point in time, persisted for some time, and it cannot continue. It has to go away. You know, when you leave your body, your pain is not going to go with you but your essential qualities are. And so spiritual practice is a way to get beneath that pain so that it doesn't remain part of your identity. It is something that came, persisted, and goes. And all things come, stay for a while, and go. That is the nature of things. All things come, stay for a while, and then go. And that applies to people as well? Everything. Okay. Uh, Sister Denise, what is it within the woman's psyche that wants to hold on to something or someone permanently, even though we know with 100% certainty that this thing or this person cannot last in our lives forever? Why do we make the impermanent permanent? What, what is it about well, us that I, does that? I, I think we'd have to say it's um, a kind of stupidity. Okay, then we're all stupid, because we all do it. Well, I think what we want to do is come out of our stupidity. And, and the um, path of spirituality is really, uh, let me work with what's real. Because if I consider the unreal to be real, that's not very bright. Okay. Which is why I call it stupid. And of course, we're all stupid in that sense that we wish the unreal would be real, but it isn't. 
The real is real, the unreal is unreal. And so we have to awaken. We have to not be in darkness, not be in ignorance. We have to be intelligent at any cost. And of course, the cost is disillusionment because once we wake up to the reality that this impermanent thing that we wish would be permanent and then it disappears, well, that's a big disillusionment and that's a painful thing. But it's also a wake up. Mm. Mr. Denise, you know, um, prior to me discussing this with you today, um, I would have looked at authenticity as being a uh, very close relative to um, honesty, uh, truth, integrity. All of those are on the same line for me. Uh, but yet you have given us a very fresh and um, well holistic view of it. Uh, what though would you say is the relationship between those other virtues that I just mentioned? Um, the reason I'm asking this is because somebody who's authentic and you get people who are not spiritual but still authentic, okay? Um, they're um, respectworthy and trustworthy because they're women of their word. So uh, take us through that. I would say that someone who has created these principles within themselves and who lives by these principles that they are spiritual, but they wouldn't call themselves spiritual because they associate spirituality with religious, and they're okay. not religious, you see. And, and actually, you can be religious and spiritual, you can be spiritual and non-religious. Uh, and, and when we're talking about spiritual, we're, we're going to the essence, the essence of a person, the realness, the authenticity of a person, so they don't lie to themselves, they don't deceive themselves, they don't deceive other people, they don't have any hidden agenda. Uh, they know who they are, they know what they are. Uh, they're quite rare. Yes, oh yes. But, you know, in my life, I've always selected people to work with or live with or whatever who are like this. All the rest can be learned, but, you know, honesty, you either are or you aren't. Yes. Yes. So, so I don't mind about if somebody doesn't have the skills or whatever, that can come. Okay, so um, what makes an individual authentic is their relationship with the permanent. Um, Sister Denise, in terms of um, uh, God, we bring him into every single conversation we have, and I'd like you to do the same in this conversation. I would call God the most authentic personality of all time. Uh, how does his authenticity impact on a person on a spiritual journey? You know, the speciality of God is God is um, immutable. Okay, that which no cannot change. be changed. Yes. No change. We go through cycles from purity to impurity, from light to dark, from you know, real to unreal. So, sorry, sorry, when you say light to dark, you're referring to the soul, not the body. <laughs> Maybe the body, but ba basically the soul. Basically the soul. Basically. That has to be clarified. <laughs> Proceed. <laughs> That's true. Um, well, bodies come in all colors, varieties, and people very often say, if you have a fair body, it means you have a fair soul. If you have a dark body, it means you have a dark soul, but it doesn't. You can have a person in a dark body who's absolutely authentic, fair, beautiful. person in a fair body who's absolutely inauthentic and fake. So what's the color of the body has nothing to do with the color of the soul. Oof. Oof, oof. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Proceed. Um, now, God being perfect, pure, unchangeable is always in that state. You come in connection with God, you're going to feel the difference. Some people, when they feel that difference, it makes them go away because they're too embarrassed about themselves. But yet there's an attraction of God. And whenever you want to come close, 
it will cause you to have to drop the inauthenticity. So as you come closer to God, you become more like God and more like your uh, essential and authentic self and you drop away the fake, the unreal, the, the shadow, you can say. And uh, that is the importance of um, making this journey to God. I see. So, Sister Denise, we have to say goodbye to our viewers in a moment or two. Um, I would like you to leave them with something to reflect on. Uh, this has been an exceptionally rich talk, and um, whoever you are and wherever you may be, um, we all have an inherent attraction to somebody who's authentic because um, you'd rather have somebody in your life that you can trust rather than not trust. Yeah. So um, whether we're authentic or not, we're drawn to authentic people. But, and and there are so few and far between that makes them even more attractive. And by attractive, I mean their spirit, not their physical bodies. So, Sister Denise, um, last parting words. Yeah, there's a lot of people in this world who are looking for somebody real and they just can't find. Yeah. And so they become very, very disappointed in life, very disappointed in humanity, because all they can see is people who betray, people who are selfish, and um, so they kind of lose hope. And uh, maybe you may be around people like that, but consider that your essential quality is you're pure, you're peaceful, you're powerful, you're loveful, you're blissful. That is your real self. Come close to that, and I think you'll start to um, make contact with other people who are also like that and that might also take you to the original pure being, the being of God. That is actually so powerful. So if there's not enough people in your life that you find authentic, you have to make yourself more authentic, then you'll attract more authentic people. Yeah. That is big. That's mega stuff, Sister Denise. Really powerful. I think it's really going to help people when they can see some ways, you know, because otherwise all the ways seem blocked or they don't seem to be any ways or you're stuck in a labyrinth, you don't know where to turn. But once you get a few ways, then you can start moving. Yeah. Okay, unfortunately we have to start moving because this brings us to the end of our half an hour time slot. I particularly loved the last aspect that Sister Denise shared, that if you yourself feel devoid of authentic and trustworthy and honest people in your life, all you have to do is become more authentic yourself and then you will automatically invoke souls in your life who are of the same ilk or the same caliber as you, uh, which personality uh, circle includes that of God. That is. That is such a big wow, I tell you, I'm going to take a while to get over it. But Sister Denise has shared some gems today, which are very powerful and beautiful. Um, she asks the question, do you choose that which is impermanent or do you choose that which is permanent? Um, and she spoke of the permanence of the soul, the permanence of God. Everything else is transitory as far as our lives are concerned. So very powerful and deep message. And we wish to thank Sister Denise for sharing her wisdom and her time with us. I do wish you everything of the best on your journey to authenticity. Thank you so much for joining us and we will see you again for the next episode. Take care. Goodbye.